up the banks It'll hardly get much thanks While the rain is falling from the sky Clouds rolling in Pretty soon you have to swim Muddy water's just a rolling by the flood itself, as it was reported, it's the largest flood that we've ever seen in the Kimberleys and really the, the impact, uh, the, the epicentre was Fitzroy Crossing in itself and a lot of the infrastructural damage that we've seen was coming out of Fitzroy Crossing. Being grown up here, I've seen so many floods, but with this one this year, it's more higher than what it was and this is the biggest flood, most bigger than others. A lot of buildings getting destroyed and a lot of people were moving out of their houses to get to a safe land. It was isolated and then people would have come through. Um, scary. 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 Yeah. All fishing spots was gone. Just brought back a lot of memories. Um, as a child, um, being in the last flood. We only had one boat, so we had to use the one boat to go in everyone's houses to get the stuff that they could save. And they only had two houses that didn't go underwater yet. They just had to um, come in town. They had no other choices. Well, it's a shock to us. And, you know, everybody's been getting stressed. You know, the water level, watching at the level, how far it's going to come. You know, it was, and we heard that we're going to be all evacuated and just, just keep watching the river rising, just keep going back and forth. It caught everyone by surprise, there were no warnings. Luckily I got out of Fitzroy on that night and the next day the river just rose and it burst its banks and it was um, unaccessible to get into Fitzroy. The road was closed and, and it was the first flood I've ever seen so big and, and you know, risen over 15 metres, which one was really inaccessible for everyone in the communities and those communities are on the river like Mulutja and Dalganya, uh, Bangari and a few others downstream, Yakanara and all the others was yeah, in shock. For the ladies out in the communities, you know, they couldn't come in to get what they need, you know, or go out and do activities because so enough for the road condition. The only way that only once we went to one community with a chopper, <laughs> you know, and just to check the ladies, but there was like hearing from the supervisor out there, you know, that she wanted to get all the girls ladies together because just being stressful because of the flood, you know. Well, there were just phone calls coming in and out and from Mawa and, and everyone saying they needed help and Let's get a team together and let's look at what's needed out in the community, whether they need food drops or evacuation. Everyone got evacuated here in, in this facility, the Fitzroy Rec Hall in Fitzroy, it's the centre of Fitzroy Crossing, and there was over 100 people living here from those communities. And The collaboration of people that came together to assist with that, just getting the food out was awesome. Uh, people just came out of nowhere, ringing up, coming down, just volunteering their time. And there was a lot of chaos throughout the whole valley in every which area, so I just mainly focused on getting the food. Even with boats on, on the eastern side, we got boats in the water to, to go out and just check some of those communities, and there were a lot of animal, cows and kangaroos floating in the water, so we had to um, um, pick up some of those animals and, and take them to, to higher ground. There are now new governance structures where local leaders are coming together to, to be able to sit at the table with state government and also the Commonwealth. You know, we've had both the Prime Minister and the Premier visit Fitzroy Crossing together as well. Um, and really start to think about how do you future-proof the region because issues such as climate change we think will have further generational impacts on the area. So we can't just rebuild the existing infrastructure to the same standards. We need to start taking into consideration how do we future-proof that? What does that look like? And that really, ha that level of consultation has to be done with the people from within the regions in order to do that. There still need to be a lot of consultation to those communities that are that have been left out. Um, and um, there's also the Lord Mayor's Fund, but it 
doesn't cater for all. Like I said, there's a lot of community and community members that are that are missed out, and we've created a little um, um, foundation funds to for the recovery. Um, um, that'll that'll cater for those communities and community members that are not viable by insurance or got missed out. So. Um, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for work-wise, and that's what I've been looking forward to. Um, you know, being in the flood, and how much disaster that it caused in the community and in the Fitzroy Valley, but then brought the opportunities for work you know, and to moving forward and making changes. With so 3 working on um, learning about chemicals, um, hazardous materials, um, and safety in working with the roadworks, so, um, traffic management, um, and heavy machineries. People needed information real quick because they lost their homes, they lost their belongings and and so on and 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 it's still not over. During the recovery stage now it's just um, moving into um, working with those families and communities to um, to try and get them back to the communities but some some communities and families gotta wait nearly two two or six months to, to 12 months. Yeah, if people wish to donate, please donate. It's not, not the end, you know, the recovery is still happening and we're still um, having a lot of discussion around how to minimize those gaps in, in funding support and support for the communities, whether it's roadworks or, or um, helping clean their, their houses. The most fun part about that I would say is that some of the um, military came, um, the Navy, and it was pretty fun because we get to explore like a couple of the helicopters and stuff, and we got to see what they did. And we had this whole day called um, Army Day where we, where we just basically just learn and have fun. That Fitra is a good place to live, but not when it's flooded. I wish they don't dam it. Mm. Uh, more sports uh, okay. every night week. Yeah, because we, we, get, we get some sports, but not enough. Yeah. I like the uh, larger swimming pool because it's kind of small. Fishing and hunting, definitely fishing and hunting. And hang out with friends. And just like exploring the nature and stuff. Swimming, fishing, all that. It's fun. Well, Western Australia, well, this is a good place to live. I know a lot of people that are, um, Quit us as the place for our youth, you know. We had problem with our youths, but this is a good place to live. And beautiful country, beautiful sight things, and beautiful river, beautiful gorges. There's five languages you can see in Petra. Look, I think really what we'd like to see come out of this is, is the ongoing commitment from state government, working with traditional owners, and really a uh, a clear goal and uh, a way forward is how is the state government going to work with remote communities and, and those regional areas around infrastructure development and how do we adapt in regards to climate change. Because uh, at the moment we've seen the Commonwealth withdraw funds around the remotes and the regional areas about infrastructure uh, implementation. So really the state government um, looking at how we're going to move forward and how we're going to help those people uh, have sustainable, sustainable infrastructure going into the future. I grew up in this town in Fitzroy and Fitzroy been home to me. I went to school here and I went I I went boarding away from Fitzroy then came back to manage a lot of the organization in Fitzroy Valley itself and and I've seen this town grow and there's there's potential in this community for a lot of strong leaders to come together, put their minds together and last move mountains together to build and to rebuild Fitzroy Valley itself. There's a lot of story in, in the river, so you know, that's, that's another thing that, that you know, reminds me of my elders, you know, and that I can go back to the country and you know, I'm relaxed and feel at home. You know, so that's, that's what I'm, I love about the river. Um, yes, makes me feel at home.